You got to sound like no one else. That's why people probably like a blue face, because he don't sound like nobody. Right. Even though if he's off beating, you may not like it, but he don't sound like nobody else. I listen to music 24-7, 365, new stuff in my inbox, right? And I just feel like any time a new style catches, my entire inbox becomes full of that. So it's been Travis Scott for a while now. Yeah. I'm ready for Blueface, just to switch <laughs> it up. What's up, geniuses? Welcome back to For The Record. I'm your host, Rob Markman. Now, 2018 was a great one. We're going right into 2019 with a lot of excitement, a lot of new artists coming, a lot of new projects that we didn't get last year that we want to get this year. We're hoping we get this year. I brought a panel here to discuss it, man. First up, my man from Hot 97, Heavy Hitters, DJs at Up and Downs. He has all the dopest records first. <laughs> Shaolin Zone, DJ Stacks, man. What's up? Welcome to For The Record. Thank you, man. Nah, man, thank you for coming. Next up, we have Atlanta Records a and I mean, my man is responsible for signing Fetty Wap, Kodak Black, Shoreline Mafia, XXX. Do you name it? Anything hot in, over the past five years? My man probably had a hand in it. Orlando Warton, what up, man? Yeah. Welcome to For The Record. Oh. Word, word. Okay, finally, last but not least, we have the host of the Brutally Honest Podcast, one of my favorite podcasts. It's the only way I feel like I can get some truth in this game, man. Everybody lies, man. But Carly Hustle always brings the truth. Brutally Honest Podcast. Carly, welcome to For The Record. Thanks for having me. Yep. How you doing today? Great. You good? Yep. Cool. So, you know, everybody had a good New Year's, right? Every, safe, happy, healthy? Absolutely. All right. We want to get into the shits now. 2019. 2018 um, passed us by. We, we, we got some taste of some artists of what's to come. In 2019, who are we really excited about? I want to start with, with you, Carly. Um, who do you see out there that you think is really poised to take over the game this year? Um, I'm really excited about Flip De Niro from Canarsie. Right. I feel like he had a huge year in 2018 with the Leave Me Alone single. He put out a street record with Jay Critch, and then he put out another track called Feeling Like. And I just think that he is poised with his new signing to Epic and DJ Khaled to kind of take over the game. I could hear him on lots of people's hooks as a guest. I could hear some features. I would love to hear an, an album now going forward and kind of see where he goes. Right. It, it was dope how, how 2018, how Leave Me Alone kind of took off because it really had legs of its own and started growing. And then it found its way to Khaled, Signs to We The Best, and, and we see him at the BET Awards. But, you know, me too, being from Brooklyn, like you've seen that, you could really root for a guy like that because yeah. you've seen that he didn't skip a step nope. to get where he at. So, mm -hmm. yeah, he's definitely on my list. Oh, I want to go to you, man. Listen, I know, first of all, this man has his, his fingers on the pulse everywhere. Who are you looking at in 2019? Who, who, who's out there? What, what's the talent looking like? I mean, who I'm looking at? I, I'm excited to hear Roddy Rich album. Right. Roddy Rich putting on somebody from LA, something different. Right. What, 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 you spend a lot of time, you, you, you're an East Coast guy, man. Like, you know, I, I know you, I mean, look, man. Two tapes, all of that. Like when we really talk about street music and and having your hand in the culture, you've been doing this a long time, spending a lot of time out in LA. Roddy Rich, what's the temperature like, man? Because it does definitely feel like there's a new energy coming out of the West post, like TDE, who's been running I mean, it for he, a couple he, years. He now. got a good energy, and he's different coming from LA. You know, I'm excited to hear him. Dope, dope, dope. Stacks, man. I know you're spending all the new records and stuff like yeah. that. He's always hitting my line like, yo, you got to watch out for. That's why I know how, who the cup had genius yeah. is when I get a text from Stacks. But who you looking at for, for next year? Um, I say uh, I'm going to agree with, with Carly and O. Uh, Roddy Rich, definitely. I went to a show uh, a month ago, and it was a really good show, good turnout, good energy. Um, I also got to say 88 Glam out of Toronto. Mm -hmm. They're the weekend. They're down they're with They signed to EXO. Um, you know, I did a, a little club run with them a month ago. Great energy. The, the young kids love them. Uh, they got a record out that's moving called Lil Boat. Um, and then also, I'd say on my list, uh, you got uh, Cowboy from Chicago. Cowboy. Yeah, it's called Envy Me. That's the record that's moving in the streets. Yeah, we, we just did an episode of Verify with him over here at Genius. Um, you know, the fans seem to really love that. You know, what's your take on on... A guy like Blueface, I think everybody's talking about him. Everybody's checking out to see what this guy's doing. Um, Carly, I feel like I seen you tweeting about it because a lot of people are taking him to task because 
he ain't exactly on beat. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, it's like he falls off the beat and then tries to hop back on. It's a very kind of unorthodox style, but everybody's talking about this kid. Do, do you think he actually has a chance? He's going to be huge because he's making so many people upset. Right. And anytime anybody is that polarizing, I mean, look at 6 9 People don't like his style. They don't like his music. But then again, he's top 10, top 5, number 1 streaming. Somebody's lying, right? Because exactly. somebody's clicking it and, and, and listening yeah. to it. Yeah. I really like Blueface. I think he's very interesting. He reminds me a lot of some Bay Area shit that I grew mm. up on when I was a kid. Um, yes, I know that people love to make the, the jokes about him being off beat. And he does fall off the beat and come back on. But I just think it's... Interesting, if nothing else. And he owns it too. I mean, there's a history there. You know, I think um, 40 is, is is a master at that style. I think when you look at that on off beat style, E40 is a master at it. E40 is actually on beat, but it's kind of this thing. We had Ice Cube explain this. It's this process of like falling off the beat and then catching it. And then, you know, just kind of doing the, the, the swing with it. But, you know, you listen to cats like T Grizzly. Right. It has a similar style. Mm -hmm. SOB has a similar style. So, you know, this is just what and these kids are about. that's all Bay Area right. roots, as far as I'm concerned. Like, I know Blueface is from L.A., but I hear so much Bay in him. And I hear a lot of Bay and a lot of artists, actually. Mm -hmm. So Talking about it's a Bay Area style. Stax, is, is that something that you could spend in New York, the, the Blueface uh, record? Is, is it picking up over here? I think the studio record is moving. The studio right. record is doing really well. has a great chorus. Um, now, back to the, the offbeat. The, the new generation now, that's like a new style to them, actually, is rapping offbeat. Like... You got G Herbo. I know they make fun of him sometimes because it says a little offbeat. Mm. Uh, you got Blueface. Um, there's another artist uh, in the West Coast, but the, the the kids today, that's like their style. Like it's just rapping offbeat. But the great thing about it is that they actually embrace it and they just having fun with it and they just put in our music. So, like I can't even like <laughs> knock them for that. Is, is it a matter of time before? Because we saw the post of, of Drake in his DMs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that sounds so weird. Yeah. But you know, usually though, but, but we mm -hmm. heard the story before when Drake kind of DMs an artist mm -hmm. or something like that, you start to see something bubbling. You pop up with the Drake feature. And for a lot of people, you know, a lot of the audience, once you get that Drake co sign, yeah, it's, they love you. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, yeah. And he has a record actually coming out with Quavo too. So right. he has, I think, two big co signs right there. So. You know. Oh, I want to ask you about this artist from Brooklyn. Um, actually, from Flatbush, Brooklyn, where I'm from, that I've been paying attention to a little bit. Sign the Kodak Black, sign the Sniper Gang. Um, 22 G's, 22 G's has this new record out called Spin the Block. Spin the Block. Um, I, you know what, what, what caught me about that record was um, he had the same piano sample as Raekwon Wu Gambino's. So once I heard that, flipped it in the way. As soon as the beat started, I'm like, oh shit, okay, you got my attention. He gets on the record, and the record is actually moving. What's the deal with 22Gs? 22Gs is from Brooklyn, bringing that energy back. Right. He got that Brooklyn energy. Young boy from Brooklyn that's giving you a, a different side of Brooklyn right now. Right. What, what, what is it, especially for, for, for a guy like you, you know, knowing that, that you, know, you brought Kodak over to Atlantic, you know, Kodak brings 22Gs into the fold. Um, and that process of scouting talent, right, for a guy like that, what are you looking for? Like, what 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 stands out for you before even the label gets involved? Before? Creativity. Yeah. You got you got to be creative. You got to sound like no one else. That's why people probably like a blue face because he don't sound like nobody. Right. Even though if he's off beating, you may not like it, but he don't sound like nobody else. Everybody sounds the same. Mm -hmm. So when everybody starts sounding the same, music is redundant. So when you hear blue face, it sounds so ridiculous to you. Right. Just sounds different to somebody else. Right. Tired of hearing the same stuff. There's so everybody many sounds Scott's, the same. How, yeah. many, how many more Travis Scotts? Yeah, <laughs> like everybody sounds the same right now. So are we gonna get this trend of people? Are we gonna get this trend? Because I did see this argument going back to Blueface. Is that somebody said that it was a style? I saw somebody make the argument that's a stylistic choice that he chooses to rap that way. I, I don't know. I hear it. I feel like, no, that's just how he hears the beat. He don't hear the beat like I mean, the rest you, you of us. You got to give it his only one blue face, though. Right. If you hear him, you know it's him. Right. Regardless if it's good, bad, you don't like it, you do like it. If you hear him, you know it's him. Right. He looks the part, and the women <laughs> like him. Yeah. Right. So he got all that going for him. Remember, this is entertainment at the end of the right. day. Some people are going to listen to music and learn off of it and coach themselves. Some people are gonna entertain themselves with music. Right. You gotta know 
who's for who? Who's for or who? what's for what? So I want to get back because 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 Carly had had me thinking for a second. There, there is nobody like him, and, and if we've seen this game, are we gonna see a lot of people who can actually rap on beat? purposely rapping off beat now? Is this going to become the de facto style? Yeah, if he explodes, then you're going to get everybody rapping off beat. Yeah. But then it's not cool then because he's doing it. That's his natural style. Right. Mm-hmm. See, that's what I'm saying. He's I'm, naturally doing it. I feel like he's naturally doing it. And, and the fear, and, and I don't think there's nothing wrong with it. And, and I think everybody could agree. I think it gets whack. When all of a sudden that becomes the style. And yeah. it's like, bro, you don't even hear the beat like that. You don't even rap like that. But you're doing this because you think this is going to get you on. I listen to music 24-7, 365, new stuff in right. my inbox, right? And I just feel like any time a new style catches, my entire inbox becomes full of that. So mm-hmm. it's been Travis Scott for a while now. Yeah. I'm ready for Blueface, just to switch it up. <laughs> yeah. switch it up. You know, you know I, I want to get your take on, 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 on this dude. He's excited excited me this year. Um, when J. Cole came out with the 1985 record and he was kind of, you know, scolding the generation of rappers. Here comes this cat out of the YBN camp, Corday, with a response to Cole right away and giving his perspective and giving a young dude's perspective. And then he dropped the record like Kung Fu. He dropped Scottie Pippen. Mm-hmm. I like what YBN Corday is. Like, I'm super excited for like a YBN Corday project um, this year. Is anybody else checking for him? Like, like what do we think of Corday? I think he's dope. I, I like the kid. You know, like he's in his own lane. Like, um, I think he's focused. He knows what he's trying to do. I feel like he's very confident in himself, and I think that's very important as an artist mm-hmm. nowadays. So, I think Namir came out as kind of you know the star out of that camp initially, and then I kind of feel like Corday is now slowly but surely yeah. kind of stepping it up, and he looks like an artist that's going to be around for a while, not just you know a one-off single or whatever. And that's no shade to Namir. Right. You know, look, man. I see what they're trying to do over there, what they're actually doing with the YBN camp. But, you know, I had to admit to Namir, you know, because I'm, I'm the type, just man to man, when I seen Namir, I didn't see all of this with his first single. I thought it was going to be a one or done situation. I thought it was going to be a, a viral record that he was going to drop and we were going to be over it. Part of the the the, the appeal of Amir, Namir, at least first off, right, was that he, he has this baby face. Like, he actually looks 12 years old. And he was talking so reckless mm-hmm. with all this gun talk. Like, it just made you look like, yo, is he for real? And I didn't see a whole lot of longevity in that. But I had to give it up. I'm like, bro, you proved me wrong. You actually had a, a vision for your camp the whole time. Um, and what do you think? met on, like, video games. Well, well, talk about one of the things is, and I always say this, and, and you guys could agree or disagree. <clears throat> I, I think Corday could rap. Like, Absolutely. No, no matter he's, he's skillful. what the style is, that he can always rap. And I always say that rappers, if you look at rappers who have 20 plus year careers, they all could rap and adapt with the time. So be it a Jay Z, be it a Nas, even though that new Nas album didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, T.I., you know what I'm saying? The Dime Trap, like, no matter what, I think guys could rap will always be able to put out albums no matter what the style is. Corday kind of. Reminds me of that. I think Kendrick will fall in that lane. I think Cole will fall in that lane. Absolutely, like Namir and the other one. They oh ain't got God. a yeah. They ain't got a lifespan. Right. Like they just doing what's cool. Yeah. Right. But the other dude, Corday, is really skillful. Right. So he could keep elevating. So I think he got a longer lifespan than both of them. I think he's gonna have a great career, actually. That's dope. Let's talk about some of the the women out there too, man. Um. Carly, I'll just start with you. Like, is, is there any women that we should really be checking for? I, I got a couple on my list, but I want to hear from you. Is there anybody that we should be checking out in either hip hop or R&B, you know, just in, in our world? Sure. I mean, I know Young Amay's been out for a minute, but I'm still very much focused on watching her star rise because I personally think that she's been very disciplined and careful. I know she turned down some big bags when right. her Ooh record was out and she just wasn't ready for that. And I think she's very slowly and methodically been putting out records, and I feel like 2019 is an album year for her. And I believe that she's going to take it to that level. She, she, Young May is amazing, because I think she found something that worked. If you look at her streaming numbers, her YouTube numbers, I think most people will associate her with, ooh, and if you're only like casually paying attention, you don't know. But 
every time she comes to Genius, the traffic goes through the roof. Every time she drops a new video, it's 10 million plus. Um, yep. I think a lot of people wrote her off. Is this yeah. still, do, do, do you still see life for um, young M.A.? Yeah, M.A. skillful as well. Mm-hmm. And she's from Brooklyn. You know, Brooklyn support <laughs> Brooklyn. So it's never over when you're from Brooklyn. Uh, right. uh, absolutely. What do we think of uh, Stacks? I know you and I had talked mm. off air, an artist that, that both you and I are excited about, Coyle Ray. Yeah. Um, she got the new record out, Huddy. Yeah, yeah. Coyle Ray out of New Jersey. I've been, I've been watching her for about a year. I've been seeing her grow. She did Rolling Loud, I think about a month ago. Um, and I think she's in the right right path, right direction. So I think, it, you know, she might have some big features coming for this year, for 2019. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. That Huddy record is dope. Mm-hmm. Nah, nah Huddy record. Shout yeah. out to Knock, who yeah. produced that too, my man, Knock. Okay, Knock. Um, when? Has anybody heard of, of When out mm-hmm. of Portland? Now, if you haven't caught wind of this story, um, When freestyles, white girl from Portland, blonde hair, um, super dope lyricist. She put out a freestyle and it went viral all mm-hmm. of a sudden with the rumor that she was Haley J, that she was Eminem's daughter. <laughs> and you know how the internet goes. If one person say it and it gets retweeted enough, then it just the becomes truth. the truth. Um, I hit them up and I said, yo, did y'all plan this? Because if y'all plan this, this is expert marketing. Mm-hmm. And no, she was frustrated. Her team had nothing to do with it. It just was kind of a lie that took on a life of its own. But with that, I feel like it now everybody's watching her, right? So what's the record? Are you guys up on when? Have you been checking out when lately? Uh, I've been checking her here and there. Just not too much, but I've been right. paying attention here and there. Yeah, I, met, I actually sat with her not too long ago. She went viral before with another sort of, I think on Twitter and Instagram too, mm-hmm. another freestyle maybe a year or so ago too. Um, I think that she really has a lot of respect for hip hop. I think she understands her her lane as a white woman in the hip hop space more than most. Mm-hmm. Um, and I really respect that about her. I think she just just wants to, to grind it out and really earn her stripes, which I think mm-hmm. is dope. And she can rap. And so I think it's just gonna be um, a brick by brick for her as she builds this. Right. And I think she's patient. It's interesting. Yeah, we had that same kind of conversation. and. and- you know, there's a privilege. There's a certain privilege that comes with being a white artist, yep. um, especially when when so much of the audience are white kids themselves. And yep. people, there's all types of shit in the game and politics in the game that are very real. And then sometimes it boils down to people just support people who look like them is just naturally attracted. Yep. To, and if she plays the game right, and if she kind of has respect for it the way that she has been moving. She has a super bright future, I feel like. Yep. Um, what about Summer Walker? Summer Walker um, has been emerging, man. Do we, do we like what Summer's doing? She's dope. She's Good on B right there. Yeah. yeah. She's from Atlanta, Georgia, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, she's official. I've been, I've been listening to her for the past six months. Who don't we fuck with? We like everybody here. Now, let's yeah. get to the shits. Is there anybody that we just absolutely don't believe? Music is creative. <laughs> yeah. You have to let people create. It's yeah. a form of art. You can't not like it. It's a opinion. Right. Um, another artist, I'd say, Donnie Lay, I think she's dope. Okay. I, I think she's gonna have something for uh 2019. You know, she had the remix for Lil Baby that came out a few that months ago. That was such a layup, man. It, Cause she had the record yeah, was called Lil yeah, Baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like if you don't get Lil Baby on the remix, <laughs> what are we doing? But she's dope. I like Donnie Lay. And you know, I'm she you know, she's a dancer, songwriter. You know, I know she got an award for writing a song, I believe, for J Lo mm-hmm. on the on the Cardi B with Khaled record, mm-hmm. but but she's dope. She's talented, and um, I think she got some 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 stuff coming for 2019 for this year. You know who I'm fucking? I'm fucking with Melly, dog. Yes. Melly's good too. I think Melly's I think dope. Melly. Uh, you know, I was I, I was a fan from from Icy from she did her Bodak Yellow remix. I I found out about her and she did Icy, which was super dope. Um, shit talk. I, I was like, oh shit, she could rap, mm-hmm. rap. Like, oh, you rap, rap. It's English and Spanish. Yeah, so English and Spanish. And then she showed up on Meek's album. Mm-hmm. On with the shits, and I think I think she bodied that. Like yeah. I was, and low key, I'm gonna get killed. I was more excited about that than the Drake and Meek mm-hmm. feature. The Drake and Meek record kind of let me down a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. When I heard the melody, the energy on that shit was like all the way up. Um, what are you you fucking with Melly too? Yeah, I know Melly. Shouts to uh, Geo. Shouts to uh, Goyard, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Melly's dope. Melly got a new. She has a new R and B song out that's pretty dope. But what I like about Melly is that. She could do English and Spanish, and it's like she could spit for you in English, and she could spit for you in Spanish, and like she doesn't sound cheesy. Most artists nowadays that try to do both sides, they sound cheesy sometimes. But I think Melly's dope. 
as, as, you know. Yeah, she's going to be able to get in where she fits in across all kinds of genres. Mm -hmm. If she wants to go into the Latin trap side, she can go over there. Yeah. Like, she's in a good spot. Yeah. Oh, what happened, man? Oh, did you try to sign up? Or, or what's up? Nah. Man, you try to get her? <laughs> I, was she in I was in Florida somewhere at that <laughs> <She> time. <laughs> Look, them Florida boys got to cry. Whatever's going Florida on down there in Florida. There. Yeah, man. Nah, um, I want to talk about, okay, we talked about some new ones. I want to talk about some established artists, um, albums that we're looking forward to next year. Um, Kanye West, right? I, I feel like we talked about him all year. And most of our talk had nothing to do with the music. He dropped Kiss, See Ghost, and he dropped the Yay album. It felt like those kind of came and went for the most part. And, and all we saw was the Trump. Now we see the, the Drake, Kanye beef. But Kanye promised us an album around Thanksgiving mm -hmm. and pushed it back to next year. Do we think Kanye could redeem himself with a new album? Do, 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 because it kind of feels like musically, I mean, if I'm he being could, real, but I don't think he's gonna make it. No? I don't think he's in a space to make something as creative as he was making. What 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 does he need to do? What what do you think Kanye needs to do musically that 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 can kind of bring? I don't us back? think there's nothing he could do. I just think he was at a point in time where he was making great music, and he's not at that point anymore. Yeah. He can't make it. Like he don't. He's not has the magic right now. Right. That's it. Um, I love he it. He had too. a great career already. Sometimes you gotta know when. It, your creativity ain't there no more. Now you're not making music for the masses. Now you're just making music for yourself and for that little fan base you got left, which is cool, but you got to know what yeah. you're doing. He still got a big fan base left. Yeah, he does. I think he's going to be a big young fan artist. Base. Man, there's a right. lot of young artists out there. Right. Yeah. And he's not he's really giving right. them what they want. So I mean, uh, Kanye Kanye is, a, is already a brand, right? So it's like, it's like with branding. So it's like clothing, like, or cars. Like, they're so big and... The minute they drop something, people are still gonna look at it, talk yep. about it, purchase it. They might not be excited about it. I mean, not, not excited. They might not be fully satisfied, but they're still gonna support because of that name and that brand. Um, I think Kanye, he's gonna be okay, but he's not gonna give us that feeling of graduation or late registration days. You know what I'm saying? But I, I take the life of Pablo feeling. Like it, it, that was a good album got. too. It was a good album. You know, when he when he got into I love it. Like I was confused because I was like, a lot of people was like, "Yo, that record slaps." Did, were you able to play that in, in the yeah. clubs and during your sets? That what was the reaction to? Oh, uh, that record is a big record in the clubs, right. and you know when people are having fun and they're drunk and they're chilling, you know it's easy to sing along to. It's right. funny. I know it's a little disrespectful to women, but right. the women are actually singing the whole song loud and clear. But you know it's just a fun song in the club. It's Lil Pump's on it. Lil Pump has a great fan base. So, so I, I don't doubt that, right? Because it's hard to argue with that. Because you out there and, mm. and, and the beat to the record is cool. That record could exist. That's not what I want from Kanye. Oh yeah, like, me. That's not what I yeah. go to Kanye for. Like, yeah. let that be Pump's record, mm -hmm. and it'd be cool. But Carly, you you think he could come back? You think you think Kanye got? Yeah, I do. I really yeah. do. I just he's Kanye West. I mean, I understand he's problematic and has all these issues, and I totally get that. But I also know that he's the same genius that made so much of that music that we've been enjoying for the past decade and yeah. some change. And I thoroughly believe that he, if he keeps the right people around him, and that's the big question mark, mm -hmm. then he could make some brilliant music again. And the way the internet moves, the way the world works now, you're just one song away, one publicity yeah, stunt always. away from returning to the top of the game. I, I always say that to artists, like never underestimate an artist's career at the moment because every artist is always one song away from you know coming back and making that hit or or just destroying yeah. yourself completely i mean it's yeah. just very volatile right now <laughs> <laughs> now well you know hopefully kanye can kind of come back and yeah i don't necessarily need the graduation sound from him or even looking for that but just something that he always seemed like when he was at the top and at his best that he was pushing the boundaries forward and, and now it feels like a lot of following what other people do, and also rushing music out, it felt like this yeah. year. Um, my man Charlemagne maybe has, has said it best. He said that Kanye was the type who would be a perfectionist on the record, right? Like I think he mixed power like 25 times before he put power out, as opposed to now it seems like he's just making a record and throwing it out, making a record and throwing it out. So it's a different process. He's like trying to respond to the times though, because I feel like that's how people are making, consuming right. music. I feel like he's trying to challenge himself to be what it is right now. And mm -hmm. it's unfortunate because it's not his best work. Mm -hmm. 
but that's the consumption cycle. But by, 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 by that, a lot one of person, music out there. A yeah. lot of music comes one, out. One, one, one person who, who doesn't need to follow the consumption cycle at all is Rihanna. Right? Are, are we getting a Rihanna album this year? Like, do you think, like. I mean, I know they said that she's working on a reggae album. That's mm-hmm. the rumors, the yeah. reggae the album. Reggae and, like, Afrobeat. Yeah, because I have a few friends that, you know, was. You see, you wanted to take time with it because that means it's going to be good. That means she's in there creating, cooking it up. Yeah. So, so, so it's creative. You, you, you vote for taking time. Absolutely. Which album? How do you balance that? Especially like as an A&R, you're working with a lot of young artists. You're, you're kind of see, but there's different type of artists. If you're right. a young artist and you're trying to make a name for yourself, of course you have to drop Just faster to keep up. up with the cycle. Yeah. But somebody like Rihanna has to put quality out because there's only one Rihanna, mm-hmm. and we're waiting for it. I think like, so. When she comes out with the music, it has to be something that's yeah. great. So something great takes a little longer to make. Okay. Same thing with um, but like Kendrick, right? Uh, I think Punch from TDE said Kendrick is not dropping an album no time soon. Continue to keep listening to Damn. So, right. you know, you he, think them Kendrick albums are, are easy to make? No, no. They great because he puts time, yeah. effort, skill, right. determination into those albums. That's why they so magnificent. You're not gonna make that album in six months. No. It's not gonna happen. What new artist has the luxury of being able to spend that much time on their music though? And that's the nice. crazy thing. It's like you have to be very established like that in yeah. order to spend that much time or else if you're not like in the cycle, in the cycle, then people forget about you and move on. Mm-hmm. So it concerns me about how we're building our next superstars if right. we're not giving them time to create. And, and we're not working the way. album past one cycle. Yeah. Now the album comes out the singles and then that's it. Before we'll work the album three cycles. You get three singles that work the whole album. So you get a couple months to work the album. People get to love the album, live with it. Mm-hmm. And then see what they like about it. it now is, it's one week. The next week, somebody else comes yeah. out. Somebody else comes out. So it's hard to consume right. music and really love music. It feels like that's what Travis Scott is doing right now. He just announced a, a second leg of his tour. tour. Like it's, it's rare. You know, there's special artists. That, you have to be an artist of a certain magnitude to be able to get two legs of a tour. Well, for, Travis album. Scott started from the bottom right. and he worked sure his did. way up. He sure did. He got his look right. He, he sure got did. his touring right. He got his music right. And he got his business right. And then he took it to the next level. A lot of artists ain't smart enough and dedicated enough to do what Travis Scott did. Travis Scott didn't come out and blow, blow up. That didn't happen for him. So what, what about a guy like, because I, I hear all of this and, and, and I actually agree with it all. But a guy like Drake, I feel like is an anomaly because he feels big, special on the level of the Rihannas, the Kendrick Lamars. Like he's up there elite artists of this day. But it feels like Drake is never out of cycle. Like, you know, when he wrapped up his last Scorpion tour, he said, I'm coming right back yeah. in 2019. I'm going to drop something else. And if it ain't features, he's going to drop a project right yeah. away. This, this is where Drake built a magnificent team that's right. helping him create all this magnificent music. So while he's on the road, he has people working. Mm-hmm. Some people don't have a team like that. Drake has one yeah. of the best teams ever making music, executive producing, producing writing, making hooks. That's why he keeps on churning out this great music because he has a, a team doing this for him and they all very skillful. Mm-hmm. And he knew how to pick the right people to help him and that's his skill in that. And that's why Drake is at the top of the game. Do, do we think we'll see, one, one of the rumors about Drake and you know up there in Toronto, you mentioned EXO earlier. Mm-hmm. We know The Weeknd is working on something yeah, yeah, yeah. as well. And, and Weeknd again is one of those artists mm-hmm. that take a lot of time yeah. with his project. There's always been this 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 rumor of a, of a Drake weekend reunion that we quite haven't gotten yet. You know what I'm saying? Um, do you think it's, you think we're gonna get more trash on the weekend and, and Drake? Um, I mean, I don't know, man. I mean, 29. I mean, 2019 right now is unpredictable, like the past year. So, mm. um, I mean, one of my favorite records of all time, not all time, but like that I, that I like was Crew Love, like mm. Drake and the Weekend. So. If they could come out with like another record like that, or just a, a body of work, like that'd be fire. But I don't know. It's a, it's because a, you know Drake is working on his album, The Weeknd is working on his album. So sometimes schedules conflict when two artists that major platform, you know, trying to work together. It's conflict yeah. sometimes. All right, let's just go around. Just things you're looking forward to in 2008. We talked about the biggest artists, right? I, I'm the type. I'm not gonna lie. Like my favorite. Albums are, are normally not the biggest albums. Like you know, I'm I'm, I'm 2018. I was the Pusha T, I was the Nipsey Hussle, 
guy and you know loved Asher World. You know, Scorpion would, would had some cool joints on it, but they weren't at the top of my list. I always maybe root for the underdog, but in terms of you, Carly, is there any albums that you're really looking forward to um, next year? Yeah, I mean, I hope that Frank Ocean drops an album. I'm, you know, it's kind of Captain Obvious, but like I love Frank Ocean. I want to see what he's going to do next, of course. Um, I guess I'm not getting my Kendrick album, <laughs> sadly. Um, on, on I think a, you might get a Kendrick album. I hope next so. Months, man. It, you know, it, it might be around March, and all of a sudden he'd be like, ah, I got it. Work, and then, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm still holding out for a Kendrick album. Me too. And um, there's a kid that's Brooklyn-based now. His name is Cautious Clay. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've heard about him, but he's definitely more of like a R&B pop alternative hybrid. Mm-hmm. And his songwriting is great, and he plays multiple instruments. And I'm really excited to see what he's going to do in 2019. Dope. Oh, anything we're looking forward to this coming year? I mean, Kodak Black. I'm on my Kodak Black season. Again, he just... He... He just dropped the new album. Yeah, he, he the artist got to keep dropping. <laughs> so twenty two, looking for him. P and B Rock, uh-huh. Shoreline Mafia. Okay. Anybody else that you're not working with that you into? Roddy Rich. Roddy Rich. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's dope. Stacks, Roddy. man. What you looking forward to for next year? Uh, I'm looking forward. To the same thing. Roddy Rich, eighty eight glam. Uh, this kid. Uh, Thutmose from Brooklyn. Thutmose. Yeah. He's dope. He's on my list you too. You know, and also this other guy, uh, Pink Sweats. Pink Sweats, yeah, yeah man. Really good R&B guy. He's dope. G- so. Genius got something coming with Pink Sweats. Yeah, Pink Sweats. He's official. Super talented dude. I'm really looking forward to this um, Schoolboy Q album. Mm. I think um, Q, again, is one of those artists, like, might not be on the level of kind of the Rihannas and, that we were talking about, but definitely a guy that takes his time and goes against the wave every yeah. time. He, do- he doesn't go with the flow. He creates his own. And I'm really looking forward to what he has to say, especially since um, we lost Mac Miller, you know, that him and Mac were really close. Um, I think that's going to be dope. I really want to hear this Rick Ross project, this Port of Miami too. Look, I don't need no trap, nothing from Ross. I just want all soulful, yeah. luxurious, <laughs> Justice League. Maybach uh, music. Maybach Ross. music. Yeah, I, I, these type of beats, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, like, if Ross could give me one of those, man, I think Ross could drop a phenomenal project this year. And uh, definitely want to shout out 2 Chains and and Wale too, man. I know Wale, every time we turn on Twitter, he is retiring or, or quitting, but I want to see him use that chip and make make a super dope five project like you know he can. Yes. Um, so that's it. Um, cool. Anything else? Everybody else good? We good? I think we got to cover, right? Yeah. We don't got to do no more episodes. We just wrapped up 2019 <laughs> in one episode. But listen, I definitely want you to check out Carly Hustle on the Brutally Honest podcast, right? Is, is that, are we weekly, bi-weekly now? It's bi-weekly, yeah. Bi-weekly? Mm-hmm. Okay, so definitely check that out. A lot of good information there. Check out all over at Atlantic Records. You never know who he's going to be signing next. You never just, know. You want to know who's hot? Just follow him on the gram, see what city he's in. You start to get right. a temperature check. You know what I'm saying? And my man DJ Stacks, man, from, from Hot 97. Yeah. Heavy hit his own DJ Enough, what up? <laughs> now, nah, and you're, you're right up and down every week, yeah, right? Up so and you, down, Tile, one of the clubs. Yeah. You really keeping your pulse on what's going on <laughs> in the city, man. So, so I hit up all, all the time. That's a fact. All the time we talk, like, yo, this is what's moving. I'll send him a video, he'll send me a song. So, you know, as a DJ, that's my job, right? Like, you know, it's to be on top of the music, the culture, just like Carly says, she listens to music 24 7. Checks her inbox. Like, mm-hmm. that's what we love to do. So, you know, that's my job is to be on point as a DJ and making sure I support the upcoming, not just the artists that are up here, but the upcoming artists as well, you know? So. Yeah, for sure, man. Yeah, you're absolutely doing that. And you, all of you are welcome on the show anytime. Oh, make sure all the artists you sign come up here. I need the exclusive every time. You understand that's what I'm saying? Fact. Nah, but that's it, man. That's for the record, man. Thank you. Leave your picks in the comments, man. 2019, who the new artists you looking forward to? Who's the new albums you're looking forward for? Leave it in the comments, man. We'll talk back. Peace.